Hey guys, this is James with the Boom Boys, and today we are going to talk about managing farm ponds and some of the top mistakes that you can make, or maybe you're making right now, that's keeping you back from catching more fish and bigger fish. So I've been managing 11 ponds for nearly 15 years. And I tell you what, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've tried a lot of things. And I tell you what, I'm going to talk about some of those things in this video. So let's get going. So the first thing is not taking out enough fish and also not taking out the right fish from your ponds. Now I know sometimes it's hard managing a pond. You don't like to take out fish, but it is crucial. Oh, there's one. It is crucial that you take out fish from your pond to have a healthy pond. Now let's talk a little bit about bass. I like to take out bass that are two and a half pounds and lower. Now, some people are gonna use inches on this and kind of use a slot limit, if you will. But for me, I found a lot of success in taking out bass that are smaller than two and a half pounds. So here's an example right here of a bass. This is a nice bass. It's about a pound and a half, a perfect, perfect, perfect bass to take out. But one thing I would caution you on taking out bass is don't take out too many bass of one size. So for instance, this is a pound and a half fish. Don't take out just all pound and a half fish. Make sure you're taking out different generations. So you're taking out a one pound fish, pound and a half, two pounds, up to two and a half pounds. So one question you might ask yourself is, how do I know if I have too many fish in my pond? Well, one really good way to find that out is take an average size bait and just see what your average fish is. Now you should be catching, it just depends on the time of the year, but you should be catching anywhere consistently from two and a half pounds and smaller of different size fish. Now, you know you have an issue if you're only catching pound and a half or two pound fish and that's all you're catching. But when you're doing this, you've gotta be very careful of the bait that you're using, right? Because sometimes if you're using too small of a bait, I'm telling you, you're gonna catch mostly small fish with a smaller bait. So a good rule of thumb, just get an average bait. Today I'm using a wacky worm. This is a nice solid bait for just catching, you can catch up to a seven, eight pound bass all the way down to a half a pound bass with this bait. So likewise, just how important it is to take out fish below two and a half pounds, it's really, really important to not take out bass that are above two and a half pounds. This is gonna absolutely crush your dreams of catching that big old eight, nine pound bass in your farm pond. So the next mistake on managing your fish is not taking out enough bluegill. This is probably the most common mistake managing a farm pond. For one, bluegill are hard to clean. You don't get as much meat like you would a bass, but it is so important to take out mature bluegills whenever you're taking out a bass. And now I use a rule of thumb for every bass that I pull out of the pond, go ahead and pull out five bluegill from the pond. So you may ask yourself the question, why do I wanna take out the bluegills from the pond? Now, mature bluegills, not the very tiny bluegills like this, the mature bluegills, because they're competing for food with a smaller generation that's coming up. And what will happen is, you'll, and we've had this in our ponds before, is that loaded with just mature bluegills. For one, there's not a fish in that pond that can eat a big old mature bluegill about this big. And so they live to be a ripe old age. And honestly, they're keeping that younger generation from growing up because they're both competing for the same food. Just a tip on managing the panfish in your pond is take out all of the green-eared sunfish. Green-eared sunfish are horrible for your pond. If you don't know what they are, they've got a mouth about that big and, and you catch them a lot of times bass fishing and they are horrible because they compete with the bass for food. Second, try to take out all of the red-eared sunfish from your pond. Now, some people would probably disagree with me on this, and my belief on it is red ears only spawn once a year. Now bluegill, on the other hand, on a very good year, they will spawn twice a year, late spring, where we're at, and the fall. So the next mistake is just trying to make your pond something that is really not, right? So here behind me, we've got a pond in here that is so muddy and murky as you can tell. And this is just what this pond is. There is no, I mean, this pond has been this way for the last 15 years and there's really no change in it. And you can go out and spend a bunch of money to try to make this more clear, either by hay or fertilizers or whatever. But I'm telling you what, this pond is what it is. And these ponds right here, from my experience, 
they're best if you just put catfish in them. Put some channel cats in here and some bluegill with them and go after it. But if you want to make a pond like this an amazing bass fishing pond, I'm telling you what, it's going to be a tough uphill battle for that. So again, see what your pond is. Is it clear? Is it muddy? And then from there, that will determine what kind of fish you have in there. Another thing that's really important is don't try to make your pond an amazing bass fishing pond, amazing catfish pond, amazing bluegill pond, amazing crappie pond, all of the above. Focus on your favorite species and then try to make that species the best it can be at that pond. So the next mistake we can make is putting crappie in the ponds. Now here, this pond right here is normally very, very clear. It's a spring fed pond and it just rains so it's a little murky. And this pond right here, if there were crappie in this pond, it would absolutely devastate the bass fishing in this pond because crappie are very prolific feeders. And so they are sight feeders and the clearer the pond is, the better they're gonna be at hunting. Now, if you have a muddy or murky pond, it's not gonna be as damaging to your pond to have crappie. Again, because they're sight feeders and if it's harder for them to see, it's gonna be harder for them to get their food. So, but in a clear pond, I'm telling you what, do not put crappie in the pond if you want really, really good bass and really, really good catfish. So here are a few reasons why you don't want crappie in your pond besides that they're prolific feeders. For one, they're a bad food source for the bass. For one, they're spiny and bass, it's harder for them to get in their mouth. Two, they are faster than bass, they're faster than bluegill, and so they're very hard for them to catch. And so obviously we're trying to get big old fatty bass in here and you don't want them to work too hard for their food. Well, I'll tell you what, you put a fast fish in there for them to catch, it's not gonna be good for them to get fat in your pond. So do not put crappie in your pond. Did I say that? Don't put crappie in your pond. I'm gonna say it again. Don't put crappie in your pond. <laughs> So next, if you've fished a farm pond before, I'm gonna talk about your favorite friend and that is gonna be moss. Now this can be one of the most frustrating things when you are fishing a farm pond is to fish in a farm pond with a lot of this nasty, gooey moss. But the worst thing that you can go and do is go get some carp and throw them in the pond thinking that's gonna solve all the problems. Now, sometimes this can cause a lot more damage than it is good. Actually, this pond where we're at right here, it went dry when we had a drought in 2011, about 10 years ago. The last thing that was in this pond was about a 35 pound grass carp. So I'm telling you what, those carp can live so long I tell you what, one thing they can do is they can devastate your vegetation and vegetation is key to growing monster fish in your ponds. This vegetation is huge for your bluegill to hide from the bass. It's huge for bass get inside of this nasty junk in the summertime because bass do not like to be sunburned by the baking sun. So just a caution, do not put carp in your pond. And if you do, just beware, only put, just depending on the size of your pond, only put one or two in there, or it just depends on how big your pond is. Do not overstock it with carp because just remember, they could get grass carp 50, 60 pounds eventually. So keep that in mind if you're going to put carp in your pond to help get rid of this nasty, nasty moss. Ugh. Ugh. So the next mistake goes a lot in line with what we just mentioned before about the carp and that is do not use minnows in your farm pond. This is something that you may or may not have thought about or have heard of, but that is the number one reason why carp find their way to ponds, and that's through minnows. A lot of minnows are carp. A lot of minnows are sained out of rivers and creeks in your state, and a lot of them are carp. Now, if you've seen a few of my prior videos, you've, you'll see that I have used minnows in the past, so, Maybe you should do what I say and not what I do. So I intentionally, when I hook these minnows, I hook them through the brain. Oops, there's the one. I hook them through the brain so it will kill the minnow to make sure if it does get off the hook, it will not survive in our farm pond. Well guys, I hope this video helped you out. I hope it's gonna help you not make some of the mistakes that I've made managing my ponds throughout the year. And hopefully you'll be able to catch more fish and bigger fish in your farm ponds. But guys, if you like this video, Please sub to the Boom Boys, that would help us out. And also guys, we'll see you on the next one of our videos.